In this screencast, we're going to be looking at how you can use stored procedures with Mindscape Lightspeed. Okay, I've got a copy of Visual Studio 2008 open here. We're going to go and create a new project, a console application. Let's call it Demo4. It's going to be targeting .NET 3.5. Click OK. Give it a moment for Visual Studio to create our project for us. Right, now in our Solution Explorer, the first thing we're going to do is add a new Lightspeed model. So add, new item, go to Data and choose a Lightspeed model. Just call it Model, click Add. Alright, so we've got our design surface here. I'm going to go over to the Server Explorer and uh, grab some tables from a database that I've created earlier. This Demo Store database uh, comes as a sample with Lightspeed, so you can grab those right click arrange and here we have fairly straightforward model it's basically cart cart items customers and receipts now what we can do now to work with stored procedures is we can drag on the stored procedures that are actually already in our database we can come here we've got three stored procedures drag these over and just explore what's going on here now you'll notice we've actually got four items being created here the reason for this is that we have our three procedures in purple. We can see here that these two return an iList of SKU, and this one here returns an iList of inexpensive product code result. The reason for this is that this stored procedure is return, returning a projection only of certain fields on a table that we want back, and therefore it doesn't match any of our existing entities. So the designer is smart enough to say, hey, this procedure isn't returning an entity I understand, so I'll create an entity for you. One thing that's important to remember when creating stored procedures that just return projections is that Lightspeed will still expect to see an ID field returned, even if you don't do anything with it. You'll also notice that we have a parameter on this stored procedure, maximum. Now the reason that these stored procedures are shown as separate items on the design surface rather than just items against an entity is because we may wish to edit these parameters. So for example if I click on maximum and we bring up the property window, here I can change the type if I wish, I can change the direction, make it a ref or an out parameter if I wish, and I can alter other settings as well. I could also choose to delete items and I could also add new procedure arguments. That's all, it, all you really need to do with the designer, so we'll close that and save it. The next thing we need to do is give our application some configuration. So we'll add new item, general, and we want to create an application configuration file. I'll add that in. Now, you've probably all done this before, so I'm just going to copy and paste in here what we need. And hey presto, there we go. Okay, so we've got the usual suspects, the config section, We've got our connection string here and we've got our usual context. There's nothing special that we need to do when working with stored procedures. So we'll save that. Alright, on to the code. Okay, so I've just got an empty console application here and we're just going to be writing some simple examples using these stored procedures. We'll get started by creating our context and unit of work. Okay, so let's give ourselves a context. So this is just going to create a light speed context using our strongly typed model unit of work that was created and it's going to load the configuration values for the default context. Okay, the next thing we need to do is create ourselves a unit of work so that we can query things from our database. Okay, so let's say using var unit of work equals context dot create unit of work. Okay. So now we can work with that. We'll also quickly throw in a console.read line so that when we run these, these little samples up, it doesn't fly off the screen. Okay, so we're now, we're now ready to work with these stored procedures. Before we go and start querying the data, I'll just show you what's actually in the database. So here's our table, um, and we've basically got three SKUs, product SKUs here. They're all types of genes. The important thing to note here is the price, because all of our stored procedures are about selecting inexpensive or, or expensive uh, items from our database. Okay, so back here we're ready to write our first query. So we're going to have an I list of SKU and we'll just call it SKUs equals unit of work <coughs> dot 
and you'll notice down here that we've got the stored procedures that we dragged onto the designer. This is something that the designer will do for us just to make our lives a little bit easier. So we can call off to this stored procedure, like so, and then we can effectively loop through and we'll spit these out onto the screen just to prove that it works. So console.writeline and we'll just spit out the skew.description. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. Let's run that up and just prove that it works. Okay, there we go. Spare buttons for the cool jeans. So I'll remember that the buttons were effectively the most inexpensive thing in our store and that query was effectively just going to say anything less than $10. Okay, so let's finish that one up. Let's look at writing a query where we have a parameter. So you'll remember that we dragged on one where we could configure the value for the most expensive product, well, inexpensive products. So let's go inexpensive product variable and here we get the maximum value. So let's say economy is doing fairly well so we'll say that the maximum value is 100. Anything less than $100 we deem inexpensive. So if we run that, well, there we go, we get everything in our store. Excellent, everything's inexpensive. Or occasionally we want to write a query where we are going to be returning a funny projection. So let's go for inexpensive products code. Oh, you notice that doesn't match? That's because we had our custom type generated for us. So if we go inexpensive, it's a fairly long name. And we'll notice here that that type of course is only returning the code. That was the only field that I was projecting against um, in the store procedure and the designer was intelligent enough to look at what was coming out and create an entity for us based on that type. So if we run that, away we go. Excellent. Now there's absolutely no reason that you have to use the designer. It just makes life a lot easier for us by being able to drag and drop them on. So how would we look at writing these queries if we didn't already have these nice helper methods already generated for us? Well let's have a look at that now. I'm just going to copy and paste a piece of code in and then we'll have a look at what's going on. Okay, so here we have a procedure parameter. So I'm working with the inexpensive products variable store procedure here. This was the one that we created a parameter for to dictate the maximum value. So we create a procedure parameter and we give it a name and the value that we want it to be compared against. So you can see there it's just taking object and we can also configure the, the database type should we wish to. Let's not worry about that for now. And the procedure query itself. So we just pass in a string for the name and then we have a params collection there where we can add as many of these procedure parameters as we like. And then we effectively run a find query and pass in the procedure query that we want to use. So if we run this up, we get the same results except this time we're still showing the code from the previous example. So hopefully that's fairly straightforward. And just to show you what's been generated by the designer for you, let's go and have a look at what's been created. So let's jump over here, look in the model CS file. We scroll right to the bottom where our strongly typed unit of work was being created. If we just roll down here, we can see here that we're getting inexpensive products, procedure query there, and the, the basically the same piece of code that we were writing ourselves if we wanted to do this manually. <coughs> And we can see there where we pass in the parameter and when we're getting the custom result type back. So I hope that that uh, has given a good introduction to how to work with stored procedures using Lightspeed. Uh, this has been a feature that we've been wanting to add for a while. And we've also currently got support for Oracle, SQL Server and MySQL stored procedures from within Lightspeed.